Hi, I'm Jody Carlton, and I'm a neurodiverse relationship expert. And I just had a comment on my YouTube channel in reference to a video that I posted about when an autistic partner is triggered by their neurotypical partner's opinion. And I thought his comment was just so valid that I want to share what he said. Talking about his partner, if your emotions are unconditionally valid, and to be clear, I'm saying they are, then why are my emotions being framed as something to be handled or managed. If my concerns in this conversation are fundamentally valid, and I'm saying they are, then why are you so quick to dismiss them the second my voice cracks? If it is unjust to do that to women, and I'm saying it is, then don't I have a right to the same consideration? And then he closes his comment by saying nothing about us without us. And I want to say that this is such a valid, powerful comment that he's said here, because it is true that both partners in any relationship, neurodiverse, neurotypical, no matter what kind of relationship, both people are valid. Their emotions, their experience, what they're saying, what they're feeling is valid. The problem comes in relationships when the emotions dominate the interaction and each partner or both partners don't have the skills or the tools to follow up and address or talk about the topic, whatever it is, to get to a resolution. So one of the complaints that I hear the most from neurotypical partners is that when they express something to their autistic partner that upsets the autistic partner, the emotions aren't invalid, the, the emotional reaction of their partner is not invalid, but it often results in a shutdown or a defensive response that then is never readdressed or resolved. So I think the the critical issue here is not at, in that either partner's emotions are invalid, but the attempt and effort placed in trying to resolve or talk it through is it feels one-sided sometimes to partners. Now, a lot of my autistic clients and family members don't know how to come back to that conversation or they dread it and don't want to because it doesn't feel like a safe conversation. And sometimes it's not a safe conversation. And I want to say that to my neurotypical partners. If you're not allowing or providing a safe space for your partner to share what they think and feel without becoming defensive yourself, judging or criticizing what they're having to say, needing to prove your own point, then it's not a safe conversation to have. Both partners feel unsafe oftentimes in those conversations. Both partners are defensive. Both partners are trying not to be judged or criticized. So the key is learning how to have a safe conversation where opinions are different, where there's disagreement, and even conflict. Conflict in and of itself is not problematic until it's judgmental, critical, and it shuts down one or both partners. So again, I want to just go back and say that both partners' opinions and emotions are absolutely valid, but the problem lies when there's no effort or attempt or return to try to resolve that issue. So what I recommend for couples is when somebody gets triggered or activated and their voice is cracking, it usually means that that person is experiencing fight or flight, their frontal lobes don't get blood flow. It's hard to think about what you want to say. Nothing productive is going to come out of that conversation. So what you want to do is to call a timeout. And you want to talk about how to do that in a moment when you're not arguing, when you're not having conflict, and agree on a code word, a hand gesture, something to let the other person know, I need a timeout, I need a break. And you want to call a timeout early when the emotions are starting to feel heightened, when the fight or flight is kicking in. You want to say, oh, you know what, I'm starting to get triggered. Let's take a break. You, you want to intervene with that type of break early on so that you can both take a minute, take a breath, come down out of fight or flight. So your frontal lobes, which is where we have our reasoning and logic, start to get blood flow again. And then you want to come back to this conversation. It may be in five minutes, 30 minutes. It may be that evening. It may be the next day. But you do want to make an effort to come back to it, both partners. And sometimes you can send each other a text and say, hey, how about tonight? Um, but you want to make sure that both partners are in a place where you can come back to it non-activated and try again. And both of you want to try to make an effort to use reflective listening during that conversation to make sure you're hearing each other. A goal for both partners is to try to make sure you really understand and hear what your spouse or your partner is actually saying. 
Sometimes we react to what we think is being said, what we believe is being said without actually listening and knowing what's actually being said. So we're reacting to something that's not actually the reality of it. So you want to be sure and, and be a detective, listen to your partner, reflect back. This is what I think I'm hearing you say. Is, am I getting that right? That's a classic communication strategy used by therapists and coaches like me. And it's effective. It's an important tool because it helps you get clarity about what's actually being said. And the other thing that you want to really watch out for is judgment. Because sometimes when we have differences, we tend to evaluate the differences. We need to assess the okayness or wrongness of someone else thinking or feeling differently than us. And really, we're all different human beings. So it's expected that we're going to feel differently. We're going to have a different perspective. And it doesn't reflect on the value that you hold as a person. Having a different opinion or a perspective doesn't change your value to your partner. And it doesn't, it shouldn't anyway, change their value to you. So you want to watch out for whether or not you believe that you mean less to your partner or your partner loves you less or thinks less of you because their opinion is different than you. And if that's a narrative in your mind, then that's something for you to really address with yourself to make sure that you're not making a judgment about how your partner feels about you just because they have a different opinion. 